I don't want money, and I don't want notoriety. I just want clean water and clean air, and I want seafood to be safe to eat and not safe because somebody says it's safe to eat. Well, oil has been leaking into the Gulf for eons. That's natural. Corexit and dispersants, that's not nature. That's man, and that's the problem. And I have analyzed Corexit before in the past for uh, ExxonMobil some years ago. And I have experience with it, and I knew that they only applied it on the top of the water, and they only sprayed equipment with it as a degreaser. The fact that they took it and injected it subsurface to allow it to mix with the oil underwater is something that's never been done before. Minute particles of dispersant are mixing with oil and producing a distribution of materials that are not common to water. I got contacted, Jessica Taloni with WKRG Mobile TV5. She came to Orange Beach and Gulf Shores and took samples right near where some, some kids were playing. And uh, I analyzed them. The water showed concentrations that were detectable. There were many that were substantial. At that particular time, I would not declare the, the sand that the kids were playing in as a, as a safe environment. Well, I think initially Channel 5 did what they could do to produce results and information. And at some point in time, they either decided that the information wasn't something they wanted or they got some pressure from someone. You never heard another thing from them on testing and reporting results like they did back in May. You know, from the get-go, BP hired dozens of scientists at most of the universities, and they're paying them not to say anything, not to generate any information, not to formulate an opinion, and not to give interviews. And that saddens me. I don't think enough information has been presented that the general public has full knowledge of what's going on out there. You know, I do know that the Dolphin Island Sea Lab has been smothered with information. I know they have received a large quantity of money, I think about $5 million in grant money from BP. I don't really see them share any specific information and test results to the general public. And if they have performed tests or had tests performed with that $5 million, I'd like to see a copy of the report. I'd like to see it posted in a four-page special in the Mobile Press Register. And now they have to go to a website and get it, and there's a bunch of tabulated information that's very difficult to read by, by a, a layperson, and it's even difficult to read by a scientist. That's why my reports are very simple. They show a result, they show a detection limit, and a date and a time of, of a test. Let's make it easy to read so that people that do not have backgrounds in science and engineering can look at a report and say, okay, this is what we looked for, this is what we found. Or when a sample was brought to me two weeks ago in front of the Finley's Bed and Breakfast at the Romar Beach House in Orange Beach, and it showed five parts per million of dissolved hydrocarbons as oil and grease in a water sample from the Gulf, from the surf, I don't know that I want to eat a crab caught out there or a shrimp caught out there. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife have set two criteria. The, the fin fish at 100 ppm and crabs, oyster, and shellfish, shrimp, at 500 parts per million. Those levels are absurdly high. There's a requirement by the Environmental Protection Agency mm -hmm. that dictates to all plants that have a facility near a body of water. There's a specific limit in the amount of oil and grease mm -hmm. that can be discharged into that body of water. That mm -hmm. limit is 15 parts per million. And your concentration Mm -hmm. in, front of, in front of the bed and breakfast was five parts per million. Mm -hmm. That's over 33 times higher than what a plant is allowed to discharge mm -hmm. in their water. Mm -hmm. They're allowing you to eat in your body mm -hmm. 33 times higher than higher that than... when you put a shrimp in your mouth and eat it. Yeah. Below 500 is okay. okay. That's absurd. Right. That number should be down into the parts per billion. Right. Realistically, it should be zero. That level should be, you know, down below one. It should mm -hmm. be a very small amount and mm -hmm. only a, a trace amount. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't even know if I, if it was at 0.9 parts per million, if mm -hmm. I would consider that safe. 
80% of the blue crab larvae showed positive petroleum presence. See, that's a problem, a real problem for me, because I'm a crab lover. I like crabs more than I like any other seafood, even more than shrimp and lobster. And I love shrimp and lobster. That just means that I am very fond of crabs. And to know that the larval, larval stages of crab that are, that are showing up with this kind of contamination greatly and deeply saddens me. It's a problem. In Bilobatry, I spent the day yesterday talking with people that have been greatly affected by the spills. And they're about out of business. The companies are now under an FDA directive to perform those tests daily. They've got, to, they've got to perform those tests at their expense. They've got to document it at their expense and report it on forms at their expense to the FDA. All these people now that don't have any, any, any business hardly, they're having to do all these things and it's a requirement or they'll pull their license. Is it safe to go eat and, 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 and drink and fish and walk around? No, I don't think it's safe. I think we still, we're still in for major impacts. If you had a, the U.S. government with the help of the U.S. Navy, they could go out there and they could find it. But guess what? I don't think they want to find it. I don't think they care to find it. They don't care to track the largest single environmental disaster in the U.S., and really, in my experience, in the world.